Chapter 9.3, solving problems with two variables, we're going to continue to utilize systems. Let's remember systems or why we, why we use solving systems is typically when we have two unknowns that we have to solve. If we can write two equations that uh, have a relationship between those two variables, uh, two different equations, not equivalent equations, but if we can write two different situations with those unknown variables, then we can solve it. It's kind of crazy, but it's very, very efficient and is used quite often. So here's example one. Joel has 14 coins, all dimes and quarters, worth $2.60. How many dimes and quarters does Joel have? Can you see that there are two equations there? Can you write two equations with two unknowns? So dimes and quarters. So we know that Joel has 14 dimes and quarters. So D, whoop. So D dimes plus quarters will equal 14. So when we look at D and Q, D represents the number of dimes and Q represents the number of quarters. So it's important to understand what these variables represent. Now, the value of it is $2.60. A lot of students will make the, make the mistake of writing D plus Q. Again, D represents the value. No, it doesn't. D represents the number of dimes. So if we want to find the value in dimes, then we have to multiply each number of dimes by 0 0.1, 0. So 0 0.1, 0, we'll say 0 because we want it to see that it's 10 cents. So 10 cents times each dime, and then a quarter is worth 25 cents. So we multiply 0 0.25 times Q, and that will produce our monetary value. This is the value of dimes. This is the value of quarters. This is the number of dimes, number of quarters. This is the number of coins. This is the value of the coin. So we were able to write two equations, and now we revert back to 9.1 or 9.3 or 9.2, where we can either graph those two equations or we can use the substitution. This one would probably be better to use substitution, and we would either solve for D and substitute back into D, or we can solve for Q and substitute that value back in for Q. So if we look at the... Uh, you see the equation. Oh, that's interesting. So notice they did 10D, not 0.1D. Um, I find that somewhat hypocritical that they did that um, because they didn't give us 260 pennies. They gave us $2.60. So this is in dollars where this is in pennies. So very important to notice. Now, they did it in pennies so you can have nice whole numbers and not be intimidated by decimals. I don't mind decimals, but both is the same thing. So they solved for D and then substituted it back into D in the other equation. You found out that you had eight quarters and six dimes. So nice fun way of going about doing this. Rod. How many rods do you know? Not many. Rod, I'm hoping, is short for Rodney. Um, but uh, I had a friend uh, in college whose name was Rodney, and we called him Hot Rod. Mm-hmm. True story. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rodney is still very good friends with my brother back in New Jersey. So Rod has 40 coins, all dimes and quarters, worth $7.60. How many dimes and how many quarters does Rod have? Well, Hot Rod, first of all, my first equation is D plus Q equals 40. The other equation that I'm going to write is 0.1D plus 0.25Q equals 7.6. I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to isolate for D. I could isolate for Q, it doesn't matter, by subtracting Q from both sides. So we get 40 minus Q. I know I didn't write it in, in standard form. I'm being 
pad. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to substitute it in for D. The reason why I do that, if I substitute 40 minus Q in for D, notice what my new equation now has. It has only one variable, the variable Q. So when we have only one variable, we can simplify it and then isolate it. I'll multiply 0 0.1 times 40, which is 4 minus 0 0.1 Q. We have to distribute to both of the terms. Plus 0 0.25 Q equals 7.6. We're going to simplify 4 plus 0 0.15 Q equals 7.6. Now we've, isolated, or we've simplified the left side. Now we are going to move things. 0 0.15 Q equals 3.6. We'll divide by 0 0.15 and we get Q equals, there's two ways we can do this. We can do it on the calculator or we can move that variable, uh, move that decimal. So I can't have decimals and fractions, so I'm going to move it two places to the right to create my new denominator, 15. And if I move the decimal two places on the bottom, I have to move it two places in the numerator to keep it equivalent. So we get 360 over 15. Um, 15 goes into that. So 15, 15 goes in that, yeah. Goes in, I don't know. That's going to be 2, goes in 30, 24? I think it's 24. We can check. 360 divided by 15. 24, baby. 24 quarters. And then we can plug it back into either of the equations. We're going to do this. D equals 40 minus 24. So we have 16 dimes. So down at the bottom, 24 quarters, or in New England, they say quarters, 24 quarters, and 16 dimes. That totals a total, that totals 40 coins, and then 24 quarters is going to be $6, 16 dimes is $1.60, $1.60 should be $7.60. $7.60. That's how we can check if you want. Gail, another 1950s name, Rod and Gail. Gail has 36 coins, all nickels and dimes. No quarters now. Notice the change. Worth $2.40. How many dimes does she have? Oh, how many dimes? I didn't read the question. It says, how many dimes and quarters does she have? So I answered the question correctly. This one just wants to know dimes. Not that we're only solving for one variable. We're still going to do it. But Gail has 36 coins. Nickels plus dimes equals 36. Nickels, and I'll change it up. We'll do pennies. So five nickels or five cents is a nickel and 10 cents is a dime. And... Um, $2.40 is 240 pennies. So just a reminder, this one was in pennies. Pennies. Uh, let's isolate this for N. N equals 36 minus D. So where we see N, we will substitute 36 minus D plus 10D equals 240. 5 times 36, that's 30, that's 180 minus 5D plus 10D equals 240. 180 plus 5D equals 240. Remember, simplify the left side before you start moving variables across the equal sign or things across the equal sign. Well, minus 180, that gives me 5D equals... Uh, Seven, no, six, uh, 60. 60 divided by five, D equals 12. So we had 12 dimes. The nice thing about doing this is my solution gave me my answer to the question, how many dimes? So we eliminated 
the nickels I solved for n which got rid of the n variable and this secondary equation that I created had only d so I knew that my solution was going to be dimes that's a nice way if we had solved for d and canceled out and only had n then we'd have to go back to the other equation to find out how many dimes so something leo another one another wonderful name leo has four dollars and eight cents in dimes and quarters he has six more dimes than quarters how many quarters does he have so this is where students struggle with this sentence he has six more dimes than quarters. So students write this equation incorrectly. They say six more dimes than quarters. So they typically do dimes plus six equals quarters. Has six more dimes than quarters. Um, so this doesn't give you six more dimes. It takes the number of dimes, add six, and that's your new quarter value. So your quarter value is six more than dimes. Well, that means you have more quarters than dimes. So this is absolutely incorrect. This is such a common error that students make. The equation really is dimes equals the number of quarters plus six more. So you have the number of quarters, you add six, because you have, and that equals the dime value. So that's the proper way of writing that equation. And then we can write 400, uh, eh, let's go $4.80 equals dimes, which is 0.1D plus quarters, 0.25Q. And we've already isolated the variable for D. So we're going to take that and we are going to enter this in wherever we see a D. We'll substitute, it's called substitution. That is 9 dash one was the substitution. We'll take 4.8 equals 0 0.1 times Q plus six plus 0 0.25 Q. Hopefully the boys listening in math class right now will utilize this in the Loyola placement test. Um, Cause this question, I can't wait for them to come back and go, oh, that question was on it. Good, I'm glad it was. And I'm glad you're prepared for it because that's what these videos are for. 0.35Q plus 0.6. Let's subtract 0.6. We get 4.2 equals 0.35Q. We're going to divide by 0 0.35. 0 0.35. Did they allow you calculators on the Marymount one? Nope. No. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Mental math, huh? What a concept. Uh, 4.2. I know 7 goes into both of those. 4.2 divided by 0.35, which gives you 12. 12 quarters. What are we solving for? How many quarters? Yes. There were 12 quarters. Leo had 12 quarters. Way to go, Leo. The lion. Nancy, how many Nancys do you know? No. Not many. At Carrie, all right. Maybe if we're in Ireland, Carrie. I know a male Carrie and I know a female Carrie. Nancy and Carrie have the same number of coins. Nancy has only dimes and Carrie only has quarter, quarters. If Carrie has $3 more than Nancy, how much does she have? My head is spinning because I was making fun of, not making fun of, I was pointing out names and doing um, uh, New England ac accents. Nancy and Curry have the same number of coins. Okay. So we know that they have C coins. C equals the number of coins. So... Uh, Nancy has only dimes and Carrie only has quarters, quarters. If Carrie has $3 more than Nancy, how much does she have? So Carrie, so let's do this. Carrie, let's put Carrie's value here and let's put Nancy, Nancy's value here. Carrie has $3 more 
than Nancy. So Nancy has dimes, so she has, um, we'll do 10C, that's the value of Nancy, plus $3 should equal Carrie, who has 25, uh, has only quarters in C. Yeah, okay, that's our equation. Um, and then, I don't think that we need more than one equation. This is gonna be very interesting. Nancy and Carrie have the same number of coins. C equals C. Nancy has only dimes. Carrie only has quarters. If Carrie has $3 more than Nancy, Carrie has $3 more than, oh no. Carrie, yeah, $3 more than Nancy. So we're gonna add $3, yeah. So let's minus 10C. This will be interesting to see if this is true. Uh, that is 15C equals three. Oh, that's not, that's not three, that's 300, my bad, because we're in pennies, God bless you. Divide by 15, divide by 15, C equals 20. So they have 20 coins. So she has 20 quarters. So 20 quarters is going to be $5. So Carrie has $5. Nancy has 20 dimes. 20 dimes is $2. Plus the $3 equals the same as Carrie. Uh, Carrie, yeah. All right. So good. Uh, Nancy, how much does she have? Nancy has $2. So this is that comprehension problem. This is where you have to sort of step up at 30,000 feet and be able to know how the relationship works, how you're going to utilize the limited information or the confusing information and, um, and be able to derive equations or techniques in order to get to the solution. So that comes with experience. You have to do lots of these problems to see the similarities, to uh, recognize patterns. Ben has $3.40 in nickels and dimes. He has four more dimes than nickels. How many dimes does he have? He has four more dimes than nickels. So dimes equals nickels plus four. And then he has $3.40 in nickels and dimes. And there's our equation. So we're going to substitute n plus 4 in for the d. We're going to substitute it. 3.4 equals 0 0.05 n plus 0 0.1 times n plus 4. 3.4 equals 0.05n plus 0.1n plus 0.4. We're going to combine like terms on the right side. That's going to give us 0.15n plus 0.4. Subtract 0.4. We get 3 equals 0.15n. Divide by 0.15. 0.15. Oh, that's going to be 300 over 15, and that equals 20. So 20 nickels. What are they looking for? How many dimes? So we got to go back to this one. If we have 20 nickels, 20 plus 4, so we have 24 dimes. So we have 24 dimes because we have four more dimes than nickels. So if we have 20 nickels, we better have more dimes, four more dimes. Connie, Connie has 4,000 invested in stocks and bonds. The stocks pay 6% interest, that's not, that's not bad. And the bonds pay 8% interest, wouldn't that be nice? If her annual income from the stocks and bonds is $2, $2, $270, Annual, that's not very good. Uh, how much, how much is invested in stocks? So, um, 
<clears throat> we don't know how much principal, I like that, principal times the rate produces interest. Yes, interest, and then if you want to get more sophisticated down the road, you're going to have time t. Interest equals PRT, principal times rate times time. Uh, so S is going to equal the amount of money that she initially invested. B is going to represent the amount of money in bonds that she initially invested. You're going to multiply it by its interest rate. Even though it's a percentage, we have to convert the percentage to a decimal. And then we get these values. And then if we add these together, that's going to, this is the interest from stocks. This is the interest from bonds. If we add them together, it should equal the total interest. And if she invested $4,000, this is the amount she invested in stocks, bonds. If we add that, that should be the total amount that she invested. So we write two equations. This is a little overly explained, but it's good because it's our first example. So these are the two equations. That's the amount of money that they invested. This is the interest that she accrued. That's an SAT word, financial word. And then we're going to use systems through substitution. Sam invested 6,000 in treasury notes and bonds. So we'll say treasury plus bonds equals 6,000 dollars. The notes pay, treasury notes pay 8%, so 0.08 times the amount invested will produce our interest. And then the bonds pay 10%. Hello, that's a good return on your investment. Everybody would take a 10% annual interest rate and that would equate to $550. Good, all right. Um, that's, uh, that's not a bad, now we are going to Isolate one of these, we'll say treasury equals 6,000 minus bonds. So where we see T, we will substitute 6,000 minus B plus 0.1B equals $550. Uh, six times eight, 48, $480. Two places, two places, maybe it's 48. I think it's 48. We'll check with a calculationator. 6,000 times 0 0.08, 480, I was right the first time. Minus 0 0.08B plus 0.1B equals 550. Let's simplify before we move. That's going to be plus 0.02B equals 550 minus 480 minus 480 gives us 0.02B equals, uh, that's 5 and 2 is 70. Divide by 0.02, divide by 0.02. B equals uh, 3,500, 3,500, 70, divided by 0 0.02, 3,500. So remember what B represented. B represented my initial investment in bonds, the number of the amount of money that I invested in bonds of that 6,000. Of that 6,000, 3,500 was bonds. So it says if the annual income, how much is invested in bonds? So uh, do we have a name? Sam. Sam initially invested 3,500 in bonds. Nice. We like that. That's a good problem. Kathleen. Good. Another good Irish name. Kathleen. Kathleen has 8,000 invested in stocks and bonds. Diversity kids. Balanced portfolio. 
the stocks pay her 6% annual interest and the bonds pay 9% interest. If her annual income from the stocks and bonds is $630, how much is invested in stocks? Kathleen has stocks plus bonds equals 8,000. We see the similarities. We see how we keep setting up these equations. Stocks pay her 6%, so 0 0.06 in stocks. Bonds pays her 9% as a decimal would be 0 0.09 for bonds. And this is the interest. So if we add the two interests, we get the total interest. Let's take this equation and we'll say stocks. Oh, I'm going to solve for B. I'm going to solve for B because I want to know how much in stocks. So if I solve for B in terms of S, I get rid of my B's and I'm only left with S's. So that's why I'm going to take this and plug it in for B. So we get 0.06S plus 0.09 instead of B. We're going to write 8,000 minus S equals 630. So again, notice we're going to solve for S. And I looked at the what we were looking to solve, so I saved some time there. Important where we can chop off and be a little bit more efficient. Uh, point not, what's that, 7,200? 7,200? No, 720. Because one, yeah, that would be wrong. I, I'm pretty sure. 8,000 times 0 0.09. That's not 0 0.09. 0 0.09 gives me 720. Yes, minus... 0.09s equals 630. Combine like terms. Oh, that's, oh yeah, that's okay. okay. But notice that's a negative value. 0.03s plus 720 equals 630. And that's going to be okay because when we move this, we get a negative on the right side. That's going to be negative 90. Negative 90, yep. And then we divide by negative 0 0.03, taking note of those, uh, those weird ones. That was a weird one. That was not a typical. So we get 90 divided by 0 0.03, 3,000. Two negatives. Divided, make a positive. So they invested of the 8,000, 3,000 was in stocks. That's not a lot. $3,000 was invested in stocks. Marty. Marty, Marty invested 7,000 in treasury notes and stocks. We call those T-bills now. And stocks, the stocks paid 7%, the notes paid 8%, giving an annual income of 535. How much is invested in treasury notes, T-bills? Uh, T-bills plus stocks equals 7,000. T-bill, oh, stocks, T-bills paid 8%. Notice how they tried to mess you up there by switching the order. And you made, Marty made 535. In, uh, we want to find treasure, how much is invested in treasury. So let's solve for S. If we solve for S, we get rid of S because we're going to write it in terms of T's. So 0.08T plus 0 0.07 times 7,000 minus T equals 535. You notice that we eliminated the S, so we would be solving for T, which coincides with our question, what we're looking for. Sorry, that's 490 
minus 0 0.07 t equals 535. Uh, we get 0 0.01 t plus 490 equals 535 minus 490 minus 490 gives you 0 0.01 t equals 5 for $45 and T equals 4,500. Two places, two places. Yep. Yes, please. So Marty invested $4,500. Marte, what up Marte? Invested. Four thousand five hundred dollars in treasury notes in treasury. In treasury notes. And that's it. Those are good problems. Another instrument in your toolbox for you to be successful with word problems. There's no reason that you can't become proficient in word problems with word problems after practicing all these. Gotta address it. It's like, uh, it's like your backhand in tennis. Can't run around your backhand. Can't run around your word problems. Good luck.